Hey guys, welcome back. It's Joe with Pro Flight Trainer, and today we are continuing with our video series with the Gen 5 Puma X. And in the first video, if you didn't check that one out yet, go ahead and look at it. Uh, it's, uh, it's us taking it out of the box and having to look at all the parts and the improvements over the Gen 4. And today, we are going to put this thing together. Uh, so you see I have all the parts laid out. Uh, I've got all the hardware here, and usually I don't lay out all my hardware. I leave it in the bag because I tend to lose it. But this is going to save us some time when we're putting this thing together so I can just reach. I'm not digging through a bag and, wait, and wasting a bunch of time. And also, we got our gummy bears handy. So if you read the instructions already, like you read ahead, you know these are very important. Uh, now, I'm going to save all my gummy bears to the end because <laughs> nobody wants to listen to somebody eat gummy bears on a YouTube video. Uh, but... When, when the instructions say so, go ahead and grab those gummy bears. All right, now, we're gonna start off with the uh, with the pedals. It's gonna be their first, uh, and I did download the instructions. Uh, I got them on my tablet, which is off screen right now, so if you see me lean forward, that's just making sure, I'm, this is me, me making sure that uh, I'm in the right spot. Okay, so feel free to follow along or just watch the video all the way through, and then go ahead and go back and assemble your unit. You guys are gonna see this is not really all that hard. Uh, it's a very, very simple construction. So, all right, so we're going to start with the pedals. And again, I have the Toe Break mod on mine. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit different, but not much different. So when we're installing the pedals here, I'm going to move it around, make sure I got this in frame. Uh, you're going to see that uh, there's two pre-drilled holes in each pedal stock here. And on the bottom, we've got three holes here on... Uh, on the bottom of the on the bottom of the pedals. Now, you're gonna you're not gonna use this first one. We're looking at these two right here. And if you have the toe brake mod, putting in these on can be a little tricky. Not a little tricky, but it's a little tricky. Uh, so because of the toe brakes, you have two screws that go in here, and you can have these washers. I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not. So if you just try to put them on straight away, they're gonna bump into those those uh, those nuts there. So I said washers, they're actually nuts. So to order to get these on nice and easy, just rotate them 90 degrees, you slide them on, and then there you go, just like that. And it should line up pretty close. So we'll, uh, and we're gonna use two of these screws. And uh, while we're putting this together today, uh, I'm just gonna do everything finger tight. Uh, that's just to save time, okay? So uh, unless the instructions uh, specifically say to do everything to sustain, to keep it loose. Uh, go ahead and tighten things up when uh, the instructions say to. Uh, I'm just going. I'm doing it finger tight to save time. Now I need to line these holes here. There we go. And again, we're 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 not messing with the first hole. It's these second two holes that are going to line up with the uh, with the foot pedals. All right, so pedals are installed. Now the next thing I'm gonna point out to you guys here is uh, your cables here. So if you do have the pedal mod, uh, the, the toe brake mod, uh, routing your cables. So what you want to avoid doing, my recommendation, you want to avoid doing, you want to avoid routing them under, like directly underneath uh, this cross by here, but you can see there's another plate where the sensor mounts to the frame. Now, wrap these things under that to keep them out of the way, okay? And you can do one on each side, one on either side. You can route them both through the same side. doesn't matter. Uh, just want to try to keep it away from this crossfire that's moving back and forth, okay? So we'll route our pedals there. I need to, and you don't have to pull it tight. Uh, just pull them through, get them out of the way. There we go. And during the assembly, we're gonna have a bunch of cables flying over the place. It's all right. Uh, once you get the unit put together, you'll be able to use the included uh, cable wraps, like Velcro cable wraps to uh, keep everything nice and tidy. And the way this uh, unit is engineered, uh, everything will look nice and neat, nice and clean. It's gonna be, it's, it's gonna look good. 
Okay, so now that we got the pedals done, we're going to attach the base. So we're going to start with by lifting the cyclic base up to the vertical position. It doesn't have to be perfectly vertical, just near vertical to get it out of the way. And turn it around here. So basically what we're going to be doing is you see the four holes here. Basically I'm going to be attaching that into these slots here. Now you see they're slotted. That's so you can adjust how far away your collective is from your seat. So depending on what type of seat you have, if you're using a big office chair or a small folding chair, or uh, if you're trying to get your collective positioning close to the helicopter you fly in real life, uh, or just to get it comfortable, you have that horizontal option now, which is really, really cool and really, really helpful. Okay, so I'm gonna pull these up and out of the way. That's about right. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gonna take some screws. And some more. Oh, one thing I did forget, because uh, I already did mine. I'll go back, I'll take it, go back a step. Uh, we talked about this in the first video. Uh, these screws here. So we've got two on each side at the, uh, where the cyclic base meets the, the pedal frame here. Uh, you want to loosen those up. And you can see now that you can adjust. So what you're, it seems, it looks like you're moving the cyclic base around, but what you're really doing is adjusting the pedal length. So think of it this way. So adjusting the pedals out if you're a taller person like me, or bringing them in if you're vertically challenged like some folks. Uh, or if that's just what you're used to if they, if the, in the aircraft that you fly in real life. But I, I, I didn't expect to have mine extended all the way out. So if you're following the instructions, you want to loosen those first, and then we're going to go ahead and attach the, the, ba the back plate here of the... Of the frame here. Sorry about that. All right, I'm gonna put these there. All right, so again, we're gonna grab, we're gonna use four screws, we're gonna need some washers. So I'm gonna put the screw head on the back, feed that through. Washer back here, and one of these self locking nuts. And the instructions will tell you exactly which ones that you want to use. Okay, and I'm going to tighten these just a little bit. And all the tools that you need to put this together are included. Okay, so you get the get your wrench, you get your two Allen wrenches. Uh, and I'm not going to tighten these all the way down, just enough to where it doesn't slide around too much while we're putting the rest of the unit together. And everything else I'll tighten up before I start using it. But for you guys, uh, this one is one you might want to leave uh, a little bit loose while you're uh, building it because you're going to be making adjustments to this because you're probably not exactly sure uh, where you want your collective to be positioned horizontally yet because we're just putting it together All right So we can see here We got this and you can see on these tracks here. You'll be able to slide the collective base Back and forth. I got that down a little bit too tight. That's okay um, And again when you're putting these together the, the you'll, you'll see the warning in the instructions. You don't want to Lock everything down super tight. There's no torque associated with it um, um, but you don't, don't over tighten everything because, uh, that one's not necessary to just get it, just get it nice and snug. Uh, and that should be good. Okay. All right. All right. Now at this point, uh, you would be able to tighten these screws here on the cyclic base which would lock your pedals in, in, in place. I'm gonna leave mine loose 
for right now because there's no reason for uh, we're going to just continue on and uh, keep building. And at this point, if you want to eat some gummy bears, go ahead. Just two though. Just two. All right. Next thing we're going to do, I'm going to set the base aside for a minute. We're going to work on the collective. Now in the first video, uh, you guys saw me hold up the bag of parts and I, I called them spares. Those are not spares. I think I made a correction on the, on the video. Those are not spares. Those are your collective parts. Uh, and putting the collective together is a little tricky, but it's not hard. You guys, are, you guys will pick this up pretty quickly. Okay, so we're going to start with the collective. And let me slide this over a little bit. All right, and we are going to uh, put some hardware on here. So we're going to start off with this nut here. So you're going to have two nuts in that bag. One has got the little ring around it, and the other one is just a standard nut. We're looking for the standard nut on this one. All right, so that's going to go on. We're going to put that, and this doesn't have to be tight. It just has to be uh, all the way down flush, okay? Uh, and then we're going to get one of our standard washers. Now, you're, in that bag, you're going to have two types of washers, okay? And they're going to be, they're going to look pretty close to each other. So, uh, as you can see here, these washers look pretty much the same. They're the same diameter. they got the same hole in the middle, uh, but their thickness is a little bit different. So, the one in this hand is thicker, and this one is actually, uh, it's got a curve to it. It's got, I'm going to call it a bevel. I know it's not a, maybe, I don't think they're called beveled washers, but I'm going to call them beveled washers, and if they're called something else, I'm sure you guys will tell me in the comments. That's fine. Uh, but you're going to get uh, four of these beveled washers, for lack of a better term, and and two of these standard washers. For this stack right that we're building now, you want the standard washer. So make sure you're using the right ones, okay? Uh, because uh, we're going to be using these beveled washers for our friction mounts later on. So you want the standard washer. It's the one that's a little thicker. Uh, so we're going to slide that on there. And then we're going to take our bearing here. And you can see in the bearing, it's got a, a wide bottom, like a little ridge there on the bottom. We want to put that facing down. Okay, so that's going to be our initial stack. And then we're going to uh, start putting together with the collective arm. Okay, so a couple things. This, this, uh, this, this is called the, uh, the limiter, so the range of motion limiter on the collective. This is optional. I recommend you start with it installed. See how you like the collective travel. For, for most of you, this is probably going to be enough. But if you feel like you don't have enough collective travel and you want a whole bunch of collective travel uh, for some reason, you can remove this and you'll get a little bit more, okay? Uh, so we're going to take these two guys right here, slide them into that part there, and we're going to take two of these smaller screws and install them here. I know I did this. I should have done these screws one at a time, but whatever. Okay. So this one actually I'm going to tighten down a bit. So basically what these silver parts do, and you're going to see how this all comes together in a minute, uh, these, these will help you get some stand, help uh, provide the standoff when you mount the potentiometer. That's not a potentiometer, I think it's a Hall effect sensor. Uh, but you're going to hear me say potentiometer, and it's it's not technically a potentiometer. That's fine. All right, so we got the, the limiter on there. We got our standoffs installed here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this over there. Looks good. And now we're going to continue on with the rest of the stack. Now. This is where these beveled washers are going to come in, all right? Uh, so we're going to start with the big washer, which is probably going to be silver. Let's put that over there, all right? And now we're going to take the beveled washers. Those are the thinner ones that, uh, that have some curvature right there, right? So we're going to take, and this is how we're going to build our stacks. We're going to take a beveled washer with the curvature facing up. 
We're gonna take another beveled washer with the curvature facing down. Okay, and see, you can see when we put these together, you can see that the curvature makes a little gap. You see that? All right, so we're gonna do that twice. So, so now we have two stacks. We're gonna put them on top of each other. So that's what the beveled washer stack should look like, okay? And I know it's kind of hard to see, but that's what it should look like. And you, and, it, and you can see it in the instructions. So we're gonna add that to our stack, and then we're gonna take standard washer, and we're gonna put that on top of there, okay? So after that, we're gonna take the other nut, that the one that's got that little self-locking ring in there. Add that, and a uh, cool thing, it comes with this little plastic tool here, it's a little 3D printed tool for uh, friction mounting. Uh, this is pretty neat. You can use this to tighten it up and make sure that you have everything flush when you, when you, add, when you add tightness to this. Couple turns. There we go. All right. So it looks good. All right. Now, you also have the option. So this is a, little, this is a, a cover for for this nut, and it's uh, inside. It's it's threaded, so you can put that over there and screw that on. And now you have cover. It looks looks nice and clean. Okay. But if you're going to make uh, adjustments to the friction on the collective, you need to have you need to take that off and make that and and make your adjustments there. I'm going to put mine back on just so I don't lose it, and I'll make my adjustments a little later. Okay, and we'll talk about friction adjustments uh, either at the end of this video or in the beginning of the next one. All right. So now that we have that installed, we're almost done with the collective. Now what we're going to do, and you can see how the collective limiter works here, the, the range of motion limiter, it just it acts as a, as a stop. You can see that. So if you decided you didn't want that, you can just remove it and you'd get a little bit more range of motion. But for most folks, that should be enough. All right. I also just realized I installed this collective upside down. So <laughs> we're going to fix that. There we go. There, now we can see. Okay, so if you need more travel, you can take this off and it would give you uh, about a quarter of an inch more down here, which would, you know, with all the math involved, you give you a bit more travel on the collective. But for most, for just about everybody, that's probably gonna be okay. All right. All right. So now we're gonna use this tension spring I'm gonna bring that in here, right between the two standoff, uh, standoff screws, if you wanna call them that, just sort of standoff studs, whatever. And what that's, what that's gonna do is that's gonna help, uh, help the collective maintain its position without over, overly using your, so if you, if you want to keep the friction looser, it's gonna help the collective maintain the position. So that's, that's a helpful bit there. So all, we, all, and all you're doing in that step is just taking it from out here and sticking it between here, okay? All right, next thing we're gonna do is install the sensor. So see we have another standoff here and this is gonna go over this white part here. So you're gonna stick the white, this, this hole here over the white part. And you're gonna make sure that these holes align and on the back, you're gonna have another hole aligned for, for the screws here. So we're gonna add these screws. Okay, and then one more. So we're gonna flip it over to where this other post is here. Oh, that one, okay. All right, so now our Collective sensor is installed, and that looks like it's we're, we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to install 
the collective arm. So basically we're going to be adding this to this. Now this is going to get, uh, now you're going to start to see where some of our uh, customization options are coming into play here. All right, so we're going to take some of these T-nuts here. You should have four of them. All right, and we're going to slide. Well, I'm going to do one at a time because it's a little easier. I'm going to slide one underneath these rails. So you can see that there's slots in these bits here. Uh, you're going to slide one T-nut into one into each. And then the longer collective arm will lay on top of that. Now, you can see it doesn't matter which way you do it. It's, it's uh, you want to, actually, it, it, well, it doesn't matter, but uh, you want to keep the long slide, long slot, uh, the, the long slot, or the slot that's closest to the top, you want that up, you want that up close to collect, okay? All right, so we're just going to overlap that. And now we're going to take one of this smaller washers here. And you should have four screws remaining from, from your collective hardware bag. This is going to be the shorter of the two. So uh, screw and washer combo. Add that in there. Okay. Slide that up, and then we're going to add another T-nut. So basically what I did was I slid, oops, I slid this up to where this intersected. So this line, this, this groove here, this slot here intersects with this slot here. And I'm going to take the T-nut, put it in the back. Another screw and washer combo. Lined up, careful not to cross thread. There we go. Tighten that just a little bit. This doesn't work its way out. Okay, so now we have this. Now we have this installed. Now this is this is part of the. This is one of the things I love most about uh, this new unit. So now you can you you're, you're, you can start to see how this is coming together, right? Uh, so we're going to eventually mount this bar here to the to the base of the unit, right? But now you can see what kind of options you have with adjusting the position of the collective. See that? So you know if you want it up like this, up like there, or you want it down flat like a Jet Ranger, and you want or you want it lower, or you want it closer to you. There's all sorts of combinations that you can do, and you're going to see here. Uh, if you want it really high for some reason, uh, and that could be depending on the chair that you have. Uh, so you can, you have all these different options, and then once you find out where you like it, you tighten these two screws, and it stays put. And we're going to do the same thing down here, down here, when we mount it to, to the base, okay? So I'm going to tighten these just so it doesn't slide around and make life more difficult than it needs to be. Uh, and this is not going to be the final position, I don't think. Uh, I'm going to spend a good amount of time, probably this weekend, uh, playing around with different configurations, seeing what's most comfortable. So when you're talking about uh, adjustments, I, I, I spoke on this briefly earlier in this video, uh, where, where, whether it's the pedals or the cyclic, and we're going to talk about cyclic adjustment height too, uh, or, or collective, you've got two options, really. Uh, well, not two options, two method methodologies. You can either, if you're a pilot and uh, a, a real life pilot who is trying to maintain or supplement his real world training, you would adjust all of these to make it as close as you can to the aircraft that you're flying. So when you're when you hand when your hands on the cyclic and collective, it's closest to uh, what you're used to or what you're training in, or or whatever. If you're uh, just a hobbyist at home, I don't want to say just a, but if you're a hobbyist at home uh, who just enjoys flight simulation, uh, just adjust it to where it's comfortable. Adjust it to where you like it, uh, or adjust it to the seat that you have. Uh, some guys have, the, some folks have that uh, those cool 
simulation seats, those racing seats, uh, and you may need to adjust it to, to make it fit around that seat. Just make it how you need it. And with this Gen 5, you have so many options, okay? So let's get this, uh, we got the crossbar installed. Let's get, actually, we're gonna adjust it just a little bit more just to make this, this next section easier. I'm gonna loosen this up. And I'm going to, Make it flat like that. Just for now. So that's going to make uh, installing this arm onto the collective onto the uh, the base of the unit a little easier. Now, if you guys want to take a gummy bear break, you are more than welcome. Only two. Only two. We're almost done. All right, stay with me. All right. So now we're pretty much going to do the same thing uh, here as we did up here. Okay, same thing. So we're going to take some of those T-nuts. I'm going to slide this back. Put my wrench back up here. Slide this forward. Okay. Excuse me. So we're going to start with uh, this slot here. Okay. We're going to have a T-nut. Line it up, put it back here. And sometimes you may drop it, and that's okay. It's just gonna fall off the bottom. Just pick it up and try it again. And we're gonna do another screw and washer combo. Now you're using the two longer screws that are left. And we are going to get these cables out of the way. There we go. All right, so we're gonna set it up like this. Another screw and washer combo. Thread it through. Just like that, okay? All right, now, what we want to do, we're going to install this, the next one, and it's going to go in this bottom slot, okay? It's going to go in this bottom slot and the aft slot here. So basically what you're looking for is where this slot and this, this horizontal-ish slot and this vertical slot intersect. And that's where you're going to put in. And you can tighten this up temporarily, uh, but you're going to want this loose because you're going to need to move this around a little bit. Okay, and keep it loose. Don't tighten anything down just yet because we're gonna, now, now you can see we have more options with how we uh, can adjust our collective. So I'm going to loosen these back up. There we go. So now you got a pretty clear view of all of your collective options. Okay, higher, all the way higher, all the way back. You can really, you can literally adjust the collective almost however you want. Uh, so this is this is probably one of my favorite features of this uh, of the Gen Five unit is the collective adjustment options, and it's even the angle of the collective that you have the option for. Uh, so that this is this is probably. Uh, one of my favorite, if not my the fa my most favorite option for the collect for for the for the Gen Five uh, Puma X or Panther X. And keep like keep the P theme going with the uh, with cat names Panther X. What do, you, what do you think? I don't know. All right, we'll still call it a Puma X. Well, I might call mine a Panther. We'll see. Uh, all right, so we're gonna tighten these down. Just to keep them from sliding around while we're building the rest of the unit. We're almost done. Almost done. All right, so we got our collective installed. It's looking good. All right. So the next thing we're going to install is the cyclic. If you want to hit those gummy bears, 
Now do the top. All right, so for some of you guys, uh, the, the screws may be uh, installed already, but if they're not, we're looking at the, the two longest screws that, you, that, that come with the unit. All right, so you put one through each of these holes here, and then you slide it into the slot here. And then on the back, it's going to be, oops, I'll fold it down here. I'm gonna fold it down and rotate the unit so you guys can see what I'm working on here. And on the back, it's gonna be another, it's gonna be a washer and one of the nuts here. All right, and then we're gonna do that again for the bottom. Now, you gotta be careful with the, the cyclic because these two cables run down through here. So when you're putting these screws in, make sure you slide these cables, you push these cables over to the side so it doesn't interfere. All right, so as you can see now, another addition, another way that you can adjust and customize this unit is cyclic height. So you can move the cyclic up and down to either what's comfortable for you or to replicate what you, what you operate in, in in real life. So that's, that's a, a, again, another adjustment option that is fantastic. Now. Uh, one thing that I did on my Gen 4 Puma that I don't know if I'm going to need to do on this one is I actually mounted mine uh, to the back of the cyclic stem here uh, because the aircraft I fly uh, at work, uh, the cyclic is a bit closer to the seats, closer to the pilot, and moving it from here to the back uh, gave me a more realistic center position. But, you know, I'm going to play with it and see how it works this weekend because there's going to be a lot of adjustments. Uh, so I don't know if I need to do that yet. So right now I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to tighten this a little bit more so it's not rattling around while we finish up installation. We're almost done. You're almost done. You can eat those gummy bears now. You can save them for later. Whatever. I would eat them. Just saying. Okay. Now, uh, right now, if you wanted to, according to the instructions, uh, your unit should have come with some anti-slip, anti, uh, uh, so if you're like on hardwood floor or something that's slippery and one, you don't want to scratch up your floor or when you find your unit is sliding around, you can install, uh, these, these rubber pads, uh, here that'll keep, that'll help prevent your, your unit from sliding around. Uh, I have carpet in my house. So I don't really need those right now. And I also have a custom seat that I built for my last unit that I'm gonna to have to look at to see if I need to make any modifications to it uh, that actually hold my unit in place. So I'm not gonna use those, but those are something that's that are available to you that you may need. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, speaking of things sliding around, is going to put together the retention bar, okay? So, well, it's called a blocker plate in the instructions. I call it a retention bar. All right, so we're gonna turn the unit around. And this thing is a beast. Okay, so the last two parts we had to put together. Slide this forward a little bit further. And that is smooth. Yeah, it is. Okay, no, staying focused. All right, so we're going to, you have two screws, we have four screws left, two of them are smaller we're looking at the smaller of the two and we're going to take this put this over so you have the long crossbar and this which is your sliding adjustment plate here and we're going to install that here and screw on the back so what this blocker plate this blocker bar does is it's going to sit between the, so if you're new to, if you're not sure how the profile trainer is designed, if you don't, if you haven't seen the Gen 4, because Gen 4 has one too, uh, 
Um, so it'll sit between the back base here and in your chair. And basically what you can do is you can either put the legs of the chair uh, between in this spot here and this bar will keep the, the unit from sliding forward. Or if you have a chair with wheels, you can put the front two, you can put the two wheels right here and it'll sit in this groove here and prevent the, the unit from sliding away from the chair. Is basically what this does. Um, and the custom seat that I built for my last, for my, my uh, version four Puma, uh, it has two ugly little hooks that hook onto the blocker bar to keep the, to keep the unit from sliding away when I'm working the pedals. Okay, so feel free to, and the great thing about this, it's also adjustable because everything on this thing is adjustable. And that's, that's really important to remember. So it gives you, it gives you a whole big range of customization options to make it comfortable for you or to replicate what you operate in real life if you're supplementing your real world training. Um, let's say, it's fun. So again, just doing the finger tight. I'm not gonna tighten it down too much right now, just to save some time. And another reason why I let this loose, we're gonna push this out here. Sorry, right. so now you can see where we would install. So you got three holes here that you can install uh, that you're gonna line this up on. And we only have two screws left, so um, whichever one you choose, which I'm going to choose uh, the, the one that's closest to me. Should I do that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna need some washers for this one too. Oops. Okay. So it's gonna be a washer screw combo. I'm put one finger tight. All right, now I'm going to use one of the other, the, the further screw, but I'm gonna extend my pedals all the way out first. Because if I don't, uh, I won't be actually, if I put it in with the, with the pedals pushed all the way in, I won't be able to extend my pedals all the way out because it'll get blocked. So now we have we basically have it put together. All the hardware is, is connected. Uh, now it's going to be a matter of connecting all these cables. Okay, so. You can see here, when we talked about this in the first video, circuit board is behind this little plate here. And to get to that little plate, you see this, uh, this little uh, plastic knob here. You're going to pull that up towards the cyclic because it slides. And do that, and this comes right off, okay? I'm going to give you a closer look at that. This slides up and down, okay? So when, you're, when you reinstall this plate, you'll push it down and it'll lock in place. You can see it's got a little, little lip there, okay? Now, also, you will see that we have the wiring diagram. And it tells you exactly where to plug in each cable. And they're all labeled. So that should help you out. So you see A, B, C, D, E, F. All right, so here's D, B, and so on. All right, so it's really easy to 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 ensure that you're plugging in the, the cable in the right spot. And there's little tabs on each connection, so you, there's no risk of plugging them in backwards. Uh, the thing you want to consider next is how you're going to route all these cables. Okay, so for the collective cables, and you'll find in the hardware bags you have the, the Velcro cable ties, uh, so you can wrap these cables up nice and neat. And there's also slots built into the frame to where you can loop those cable those velcro t ties in to uh to keep everything nice and tidy nice and clean all right so for here for the collective cables there's a slot right here i don't know if you guys can see that very well move it up here there's a there's a slot here that you can feed the cables through 
and go. And then connect to the uh, control board. And so you can feed them all through there one by one. And that and that and and then you can even use some of those cables to loop through here and keep them together nice and clean so everything's not floating around. For your cyclic and your pedal cables. Okay. There's a slot here in the top. Now, some of you are going to be very tempted to try and feed those cables through this. There's a notch right here. Don't don't put them through there, okay? Because uh, that is where the USB cable connects to the to the uh, control board. What you want to do is stick them through this slot in the top here, so you can kind of see it through here, and then feed them down through there. Okay, and there's another slot here where you can put your Velcro uh, cable tie or cable wrap and you can feed them all through here individually. Okay, so and that will keep everything nice and clean, nice and tidy. Uh, and when you're, another thing to consider when you're doing uh, the cyclic cables, uh, do it, feed them through with the cyclic folded so you get the proper amount of play here before you cinch them down with the uh, with the cape with the uh, with the cable wrap okay and then you can lift up the cyclic and then you'll have that play already installed so you can see how it bends here because if you had it too tight you won't be able to still you won't be able to still your cyclic okay so you want just a little bit of space on on this one here all right uh, one last thing, and I kind of skipped over it in the instructions. So when you store the cyclic, there's a little notch in the plate back here. This little guy here is a little plastic part. This fits into that slot and makes the back of the, uh, the, the hole or the slot or the, uh, the box where the cyclic rests in flush. So when you're moving the cyclic all the way forward, it doesn't get caught in that notch. So you still retain all of your uh, your your lateral uh, cyclic freedom of lateral cyclic movement. Okay, Let's slide that in there. So you only have to pull this out when you want to stow the cyclic. Otherwise, you can just leave it in. So now, with that installed, you can move the cyclic left and right with full forward cyclic and it just slides across the back of that range of motion limiter so it doesn't, doesn't fall out, okay? All right, so there you have it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to, um, I'm gonna basically, uh, Play around with it, get the get the cyclic adjusted the way I want it, get the collective adjusted the way I want it. Pedals are probably already where I want them, uh, and then once that's once once the controls are set where I like them, I'm going to tighten everything down, and I'll be set. Now we're going to talk about friction, 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 friction. So this is something that uh, comes up a lot, regardless of uh, the flight controls you're using. Now, especially with these, because these are friction-based. Now, the, my methodology for setting friction on my flight controls is this. Now, uh, there are some folks out there who modded their Gen 4s with like the motorcycle steering damper, uh, which is cool. If, if, if that works for you, awesome. Uh, I didn't really feel the need to do that to mine. I thought that mod was really interesting and neat, uh, but I didn't really feel the need to do it with mine because I got the... The friction to be the way I wanted it without that and it was it was still smooth so this is my methodology for friction okay so right now this is pretty loose which is fine uh, so what I do is I would tighten the friction to the point where the controls won't move on their own right well not move on their own but when I release it it's so it stays I'll do probably a, a turn or a quarter turn more than that and that's typically where you'd want it for a to, to simulate a hydraulically boosted helicopter. Okay, 
uh, collective. I like a little bit more friction on my collective. Uh, and pedals, I like a little bit more friction than most of you will probably need. Uh, and that's because the aircraft I fly has a uh, has force trim on the pedals and it also has uh, all three controls have a, a feel spring that give uh, mechanical feedback. Uh, most of the helicopters you guys will be exposed to probably don't have that. Uh, so if you're talking about a hydraulically boosted or hydraulically driven helicopter, there's not a lot of back pressure on your cyclic that you're going to feel. So uh, in the absence of some sort of like electronic control loading that simulates, uh, or just that control loading, uh, like on some of the really, really expensive uh, flight simulation kits that are probably not intended for home use, uh, a, a smooth, light touch cyclic feel is really what you're looking for. And on most smaller helicopters, it doesn't really take a lot of force on the pedals to get them to move. Uh, as a matter of fact, it takes very little. It's a very light touch. Not, I won't say very light touch, but uh, it's not so much where you feel like you're 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 trying to pump water with the things. Okay, uh, so don't go too crazy with the friction. It should be nice and smooth, especially in the cyclic. It should take a light touch to move that around. That's what hydraulics are for. <laughs> hydraulics are to make it as easy as possible to move those big heavy rotors and, and swash plates and, and and things like that. Uh, so we just keep that in mind. Now for me, I tighten mine down a little bit more probably than what most people are gonna need because the controls in the aircraft I fly uh, naturally feel a little heavier. Uh, so I tighten mine down a little bit more. Uh, and when I do that, and if you do decide you need more friction, that's when uh, some silicone oil or some silicone grease would come into ha come in handy. So just you would just uh, apply a little bit to the washers here or or anywhere you hear the squeaking because they'll, they'll probably start to squeak if you do that and you want to add that silicone oil to keep it nice and smooth and to ease up on that metal to metal contact if you're going to have it cinched down but uh, if you have it uh, nice and smooth nice that you need a nice light touch for and even this this is pretty good um, I may may tighten it laterally it may increase the friction laterally a little bit see how it kind of falls over a little bit um, but a small adjustment to lateral and, and the cyclics are already good for for the most part. Um, in the collective, I'll add a little bit of, I'll probably add a little bit more friction for the collective and be good. Pedals, I haven't I'll have have to check. So when you're moving your pedals, uh, keep in mind that your feet, your legs are a lot stronger than your, than your arms are. So don't cinch this down so hard that you can't move it uh, because your pedals are, leave it loose. It, it, it's just remember that your uh, your legs are stronger. So whatever you're moving with your arms is not what your legs are going to feel. Okay? Uh, so that about wraps it up for this video. Uh, we got it together. And for the next video, when we show when we talk about... Uh, the next video is pretty much just going to be a review overall. We'll probably talk about some in-game setups. So we'll probably talk about some... Uh, some... Uh, configurations for X-Plane DCS. As of now, I don't have the new Microsoft simulator that came out last year. Uh, there's no really native helicopters for it, so it hasn't really grabbed my interest. That's a lot of money for a simulator that didn't have helicopters. Uh, so, uh, but who knows? I may have it by then. We'll see. Uh, but for now, I'm going to get to know this unit a little bit better, and then we'll, uh, in the next video, we'll talk configurations and just do an overall review uh, after I've gotten to know it a little bit.